Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Honorable Kibi. How are you today? No, I'm fine. I'm very fine and smart. Okay, I can see. I can see. Chair, <laughs> recording in progress. Well dressed, Chair. Well dressed. <laughs> yes. So, we are going for money past past level, and it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. ngogu sa ubetia ibe nye inadze. Hey, hey. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, che. Ditinga njalo, ya ukomeke kakuni, honorable game. But if ni ya, uh, ni betis ndongo kawuleza, singa kwazu ifu mana lega, first level. Asina, this is a tsuliba zisa sikalwa. Okay. Let me nam, dinga moshi stretch again, uh, honorable members. Let me take uh, this opportunity to welcome everyone to this portfolio committee meeting today. Honorable members, allow me to give a special welcome to two new members, Honorable Mukwebo and Honorable Mukweba to our committee. I would also like to wish Honorable Soma well in her new responsibilities as she has been deployed to another committee by the, by the ANC. I would also like to note two apologies for, two, for today's uh, portfolio committee. The apology from Honorable Kungubele and the, the apology from Honorable McClure. Honorable members, today's meeting was supposed to discuss two agenda items, which are as follows. Briefing by the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation. 
on the integrated medium term strategic framework monitoring and reporting system that track progress and support implementation. And then briefing by minister in the presidency and the GIS, GCIS rather, with regard to repositioning and progress regarding the measure of brand South Africa and tourism South Africa. However, on the 26th August, my office received a letter from the Minister of um, Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, Honorable Kungubele, requesting for the postponement of that item relating to repositioning mm -hmm. and measure of Brand South Africa and Tourism South Africa. The Minister requested to be given sufficient time to firstly meet with Brand South Africa Board to familiarize himself with the pros and cons of the proposed repositioning and measure of Brand South Africa and Tourism South Africa. We will reschedule this agenda item in the next quarter for the committee. With those few words, allow me therefore to introduce one of the two deputy ministers to provide an opening remark on the presentation before us. I don't know which one will, will, will do that. They will, they will just take the floor. Anyone who's ready to do that rather must take the floor and make the opening remark. Thank you very much, honorable members. Thank you, Chairperson. DM Siwaya will lead the discussion. Uh, let me start by acknowledging the presence of Deputy Minister Gagan to greet members of the committee, the DG and the team from DPME and, and all colleagues. Indeed, Chair, we're really happy to come here to come in and, and provide this presentation in relation to the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, but also to just re-emphasize and apologize that we are requesting that we will table the issue of brand essay through GCIS in the, in the next quarter. We are going members of the committee to make a report which is going to be led by the DG and the team on rated medium term strategic framework. <laughs> okay, monitoring and reporting systems that track progress and support implementation. Just a few highlights. The report which the department is going to make is going to look into this item. Integrated monitoring, monitoring of implementation of the MTSF. MTSF is the medium term strategic framework, the integrated monitoring framework, monitoring of implementation of the MTSF reporting. So it's different from what I, I mentioned in the, in the beginning. Ministerial performance agreement, intervention support, operation PAKISA, and the presidential hotline. Uh, so I'm going to request that the team just then go into deeper, deeper into re in relation to presenting this. And I want to apologize. Let me also uh, welcome the two members of the committee who have joined us. Welcome to the team. This is a beautiful team. We're happy that you have been deployed to come here. DG, I'm going to request that you then with the team go into details with it. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks, DM. Good morning, Mr. Chairperson, honorable members, DM Kekana, and colleagues from the department. We once again welcome this opportunity to come and address you on this important matter. As it has been indicated today, we are going to be talking about integrated monitoring, which is one of the key deliverables of the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation. Chairperson, with me, I have colleagues who are going to take us through the presentation. The presentation is going to be led by Zakere Mdalosi, supported by Hank Serfonde, and we have other colleagues who are going to join us when we respond to your questions. So without much ado, Chairperson, I'll ask Mr. Mdalosi to commence with the presentation. Thank you.
Top, what's happening? Oh, I, we seem to be having a challenge. I'm asking Mr. Serfontein Hank to start with the presentation. Okay, um, thank you, DG, and thank you, honorable members, for this opportunity and, and uh, for us to present. So, so yeah, I think, and, and thanks to the DM for the, for the introduction. So I think, uh, Noctula, if we can go to the first side piece. So what, it, what we're presenting today is, is the integrated sort of monitoring tools that, that we use in DPME. And, and I think we have to upfront saying that, that we are also in the process of alignment. I'm unable I'm, I'm to hear anything from the meeting. I'm, I'm not sure what to do now. Okay. No, Hank is presenting. Please proceed, Hank. Okay. Thanks, Thank thanks you. I, I, I cannot hear anything. And uh, Hank was presenting. assisting me with this thing just now. But all of Hank a sudden, is no longer. Yes, okay. Hank, so Hank, Hank Serfonten is presenting. Yes, and we can hear him. So he should continue. The IT guys must address that problem of a member who's not able to hear us. Maybe but the presentation must continue. Log, the log off and log back. Please to log off and log back. Let's continue. Okay, thank you, Honorable DM and Honorable Chair. Um, yeah, so within DPME, um, like I said, we, we're also acknowledging the fact that we, we have to, uh, we can improve these systems and how we go forward. So the, the first sort of monitoring system that we have is what we, we call the POA system, the Program of Action System. And that was monitoring the implementation of the MTSF, or it still is monitoring the implementation of the MTSF. Um, then we have the operational Pakisa initiative, and, and this is based on the um, Malaysian big fast results approaches and those, and, and it was, it, it is still is sort of saying, how can we fast track uh, development and, and, and improvements in, in service and those things. So. So it's about sort of selecting a few key projects and then fast tracking those implementation of, of, of those initiatives or projects. So then we have the, the local government management improvement model. So that is a, a model that assesses the capabilities as well as the delivery of basic services to, to municipalities. So what, what we do is we, we select a, a number of, of municipalities every year, and then we, we go through a whole process with them about doing uh, analysis, assessments to see what is their capabilities like, and then we then come up with improvement plans and then monitor those improvements. So within DPME, we're also looking at the institutional performance monitoring, uh, which will include the national provincial departments as well as the entities, as well as we do the individual uh, performance monitoring, which is then the ministers as, as well as the, the heads of departments, the DGs. Um, and, and on the HODs, just to note that, that uh, DPSA does the, the policy on the performance management of, of HODs and, and we as DPME are implementing that policy. Uh, we have frontline service delivery monitoring that will include the hotline. And then we assess at different levels and, and quality of services provided to that. Um, and yeah, I think that hotline is just a repeat. So next slide, please, Nokatula. Um, yeah, so again, I think this is just sort of giving you a breakdown of, of the products that, that we, we, we deliver as DPME. And I, and I think the, the, the product that we highlighted there is the annual uh, biannual MTSF reports. And I think what we saying is, is that all the different reports that's listed below, we want to integrate that into that one single biannual uh, medium-term 
report. Um, so yes, we are committed to do the GBV and the COVID uh, vaccination rollout reports. We have um, scorecards for, for ministers that, that we will be presenting to the president um, and cab memo briefings and so and and as and all the other ones. So so again under public service sector monitoring. So you'll see those are the two branches we have a sector monitoring and public sector monitoring, which public sector monitoring is the one that looks at more the capable capable state and all these reports and deliverables are part of of of, of that that branch. So next slide please. Um, Okay, Nokotula, it doesn't seem to be moving. Oh, there we go. So again, I, I think um, what, what I was saying is, is that all these reports and all these different systems will give us the perspective of sort of different perspectives on, on performance and, and improvements with, within the whole public service. So Again, if we, we're saying, yes, we have the MTSF, and I think the, the overall sort of goal and strategy of DPME is to ensure the implementation of, against the MTSF. So whatever we do, all the different tools, they are sort of contributing and, and attributing towards the achievement of our NDP targets as well as the, the MTSF, which is the, the medium term plan that guides us towards, towards delivering on, on the NDP. So, so typically what we will find is, is that, yes, the, 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 our sector branch with the POA report will talk directly to the MTSF targets. Then our frontline sort of reports and the units will be giving us the perspective of the citizens. So yes, we might be saying we're building so many houses, we're building so many schools and those things. But then through our frontline engagements, we will then start getting the perspective and saying, is, is this the citizens, all of them, is the, are they in agreement to, to what the public service is reporting to us to then say, um, Yes, the schools are built, but was the schools built in the right places? And was the issues with, with the school? Was the taps, taps installed? Yes, but unfortunately, there's no water in the pipes. So, so those are the types of issues that, that we would try and verify and understand from our frontline stuff, uh, units. And then again, in our institutional performance monitoring, we would then try and, and sort of assess whether the, the, the capabilities of the state are existing to be able to deliver against those targets and, and indicators in the MTSF. So typically, um, a lot of the MTSF targets is delivered by, by local government. So what we would then also assess is saying, is the local government capable, is the municipalities capable of implementing those targets? And, and, then, and then through our LGMIM system, we would try and understand what is the challenges, what's the reasons why we cannot, um, why local government cannot assist and then uh, um, initiate some in interventions to try and assist and, and ensure that, that they have the capabilities to, to perform. So I think that's just saying that all our systems needs to contribute towards us achieving our NDP and MTSF targets. Thank you, next slide, please. Um, so yeah, so this is the, the section that deals with the MTSF. And, and I think it's, it's MTSF is yes, it's based on the NDP. It's the five-year plan in which for, for the implementation towards the NDP 2030 targets. Um, and then we also, at the end of each term, we then do a 25-year review 
which will then inform the next five-year plan for implementation, as well as this is this is synchronized with the elections. And then we also would take the electoral manif manif mandate and then we would then revise the new plan, the new MTSF, as well as which is then sort of launched at the, the State of the Nation address. So what then happens is, is that we, we also DPME, we, we in charge of also the planning, the short and, and medium term planning within departments. So we issue the frameworks and guidelines on how to do planning. Um, and then, and then the departments are then required to to adopt and and factor these MTSF targets into their annual and strategic plans. But as we all know, unfortunately, we were hit in 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 twenty twenty, early twenty twenty, with the COVID pandemic, and that required that that we had to divert quite a bit of funding towards the, the um, economic support systems, as well as the, 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 the initiatives to, to cope with the, the pandemic. So, so that then required that our uh, MTSF for, for 1924, then we had to reprioritize and, and relook at that. So, and you probably know as well as me, that the pandemic is still there as well as the, the, the unrest we had earlier in July, um, all of those things are sort of in asking that we have to revisit the, the MTSF because I think it was still based on prior COVID and, and, and those, those, um, those things. Um, and unfortunately, I think our, our um, NDP targets of unemployment, poverty, and all of this as, as worsened. So, so I, yes, we have to then have to look at uh, how do we go forth and use the last two years of, of this administration to then catch up and, and catch up on, on, on our targets. So thanks, Nokutula. Okay. Yeah, so within the um, MTSF, we, we have these critical critical actions that, that has to be taken. It's, it's the, the outputs and those that we are saying has to be generated in, in order for us to, to realize the, the outcomes and, and the impacts that, that we foresee. Um, Again, I think we the attempt was to try and sort of focus and and have have limited limited focus so that we can deliver on those ones. Um, yeah, um, and then the and then again, like I said, it sets the the plan for the five years, and 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 it was informed by all of these things. So, um, so yeah. So I think the priorities was the precondition for success. Um, it's energy, water, rail, ports, climate change. Um, and, and it's about transforming the economy to serve the people, about advanced uh, social transformation, build safer communities, fight corruption and promote integrity, and then strengthen government and public institutions, build national unity and embrace diversity and South Africa uh, and, and, and the world. Um, I think it's a better South Africa, Africa and the world. So, so those are the, the seven priorities um, that was then set by the NDP, the 25 year review, the electoral mandate, and, and it was confirmed in the State of the Nation address. So, um, I think like like we say, like I said, is is the yes, the NDP is the, the impacts and the outcomes that we want to see. We're saying the MTSF is is the five-year plan. And then you have our sector plans, our delivery agreements, the performance agreements with, with individuals as well as the national department plans. And we we we're striving to see the the, the theory of change there. We're clearly 
that we're producing the right outputs and we produce it in a good, right, um, we, we deliver the right things right and then ensure that all these, these um, plans are aligned and will provide, give us our ultimate impacts. Um, so I think these are the, the, the seven priorities that were set. So we started with the capable state and, and I think the acknowledged capable, ethical and developmental state and the acknowledgement is definitely that, uh, that we will not be able to achieve our, any of our targets if we don't have a state capable of, of delivery. And, and ethical and, and all of that in nature. Um, so we have also then clusters, the, the DG and ministerial clusters that are sort of looking after the specific priorities. So, so you'll see the, the clusters at the end there. Um, so next priority is it's about economic transformation, job creation. So, so this one is definitely directly working towards alleviation of the triple challenge. And again, we have the economic sectors and, and cluster that's dealing with that education. And um, I, I think this is probably well known by, by the committee. So, so we have, like I say, these are the clusters and, and what they contribute and which is the cluster system that, that supports that, that initiative. Um, next one, please. Okay, so so I we will just then share a bit of about our, our monitoring systems and how we, we go about. So again, we we work closely with our, our core departments. So so again, we're having um, let's say if it's about education issues, we, we do interact and and and, and work closely together with, with the education national departments and provincial departments to be able to assess progress on this. Um, we also do utilize Stats South Africa. So we do get, um, let's call it secondary data from these Stats South Africa and other institutions that provides us with um, data that can either support or confirm or deny whatever claims and, and reports we're getting from, from departments. So the reports from departments we're getting via those clusters that, that we mentioned in the, in the first, um, the previous slide. So, yeah. And again, I think the second bullet is just, yes. Then, then we also do go out to, to the front lines to try and also verify and whether whether the the citizens and as well as the frontline staff, whether they share the um, and support those those findings that is reported to us by the departments, um, we've also just started sort of embarking on on the the tracking of of state owned companies as well as as public entities, because um, I think we we are seeing. We are saying they they definitely part of the, the 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 state and the capabilities of the state. So so in a lot of cases we are transferring some of the the mandates and and, and functions to to entities to perform on the behalf of departments. So we we are also sort of working on 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 improving their governance and performance through our monitoring. Um, yeah, so so the the policy frameworks for 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 women, people with disability, use deployment, they are all integrated into our monitoring system. So typically within our performance agreements with ministers, you would you would see that there is a, a requirement to to have a gender gender um, gender budgets and and plans in place, uh, and and all this information that we gather will be enable us to, to also verify and triangulate our data to then be able to get to, to the right, right point. Just to mention, we also are utilizing some of GCIS's uh, data that are coming through um, to be able to, to, to ensure that we, we get the right picture and, 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 and that in place. So, um, 
Yeah, I think if we have the next one, please. Um, okay, so so yeah, again, I think this slide just depicts how our different sort of systems and tools that we have in place to be able to um, to report <clears throat> and track the the uh, implementation towards the MTSF. So, like I think. It just repeats all, all our different reports. So maybe the one I haven't really spoken about is the quarterly progress reporting, what we call the QPR system. That's a system where, where departments would report on a quarterly basis against the annual performance plans. And again, if, if, if you remember the slide about the alignment and the clear line of sight, is if departments are capturing the APP of the MTSF targets into the APPs, we can then on a quarterly basis monitor uh, implementation against those, those MTSF targets. And, and, and that would, would then um, would also assist us in, in the monitoring. Thanks, Nokutula. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, so so this slide just 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 depicts and saying that that yes, we have reports that are coming from from departments. So departments would would then provide us with reports on on the implementation of the the targets and indicators on that. We then, as as DPME, would then use the departments' reports together with the information we're gathering from. Stats South Africa, GCIS, as well as, as other, other instruments that, that gives us um, some additional information regarding those, um, some of the specific issues. Um, and then what we then do is, is we analyze the, the, the progress against, against those, those specific targets. And then obviously we... Um, identify key key actions so so definitely the so what question answering the so what question so so if we're lagging behind in certain areas we then come up with with um with strategies and recommendations on on how do we ensure that we catch up and and and, and progress so so once we've done the analysis and the recommendations on, on the way forward, we then do our six monthly report to president and cabinet, and then cabinet will provide us with directives and actions on, on the recommendations. And then we, we start the cycle again. So thanks, Nokutula. Um, so this is the ministerial performance agreements. So as you know, the ministers or the president concluded agreements with all ministers. Um, I think it was October last year, and all these agreements are, are on, on the webs, on the internet to be seen. And, and what now happens is, is that um, we are in the minister's agreement, there are different sort of key responsibility areas. So the first key responsibility areas around is around the MTSF and the ministers or the ministries sort of um, contribute, direct contribution to, to the MTSF achievement of those targets. But we also have some generic targets built into the um, uh, performance agreements which looks after sort of looks at stuff like the oversight over 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 the department the oversight over the dg as well as oversight over the entities uh, within the control under the ministry as well as 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 sort of the minister's political performance of their political sort of responsibilities and those type of things so we we now at the point where we have uh, we populating the report cards. So based on, on the performance till the 31st of March this year, um, and then based on the biannual report that we, we produced till the end of last financial year, 
or based on the performance till the end of last financial year. We are now populating the report cards and we will be sending those report cards uh, first for, for consultation with the specific ministries. And then uh, we will then subsequently in finalizing the analysis and reports, we will then submit that to the, the president. And um, yeah, um, so I, I think that's the ministerial performance agreement process. Next one, please. Um, and this is the intervention support where again, as I said, when, when we do the analysis and, uh, and finding that there's some challenges, there's some blockages within the system, and then we, we go through uh, all process on how do we support and ensure that we catch up and, and, and that we, we, yeah, we, we achieve our targets as we sit along. So, so this is definitely done in collaboration with the relevant departments and, and the center of government as we go forward. Um, and, and then I think we, yeah, okay. So Operation Pakisa, like I said in the beginning, is, is the approach that, that government adopted. And like I said, it, it was coming from, from sort of learnings that we got from the Malaysian big, big fast results approach. Um, and we also saying it's, it does stimulate quite a lot of in innovation and pioneering approaches. And, 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 and for us, I think the, the big one is, it also brings all the relevant parties together. And then in, a, I think what it's called a lab, um, all these parties sit down and then, you know, I, I think the development of strategies and, and unblocking of blockages is just that so much quicker and, and, and the success. So Pakisa, yes, will also strengthen accountability and transparency for us and, um, and definitely accelerate service delivery. And, and there's been some, some, um, some, some achievements in the uh, marine and ocean economy and, and those things that we've already seen out there. So, I think this is this the minister's um, responsibilities that then have to to oversee the implementation and how we we run the the labs from there. So I, I think next slide, please. And I think there's a list. Sorry, uh, there was a list of all the pakisas that we've had from agriculture, land, rural development, ocean economies, ideal clinics, and so forth. So I thank you. Uh, Chairperson, that concludes our presentation. So we are ready to take questions together with the DMs. Thank you. Thank you. Can members show hands, those who want to ask questions? I see Honorable Nduli and Honorable Mbweba, uh, Mbweba Honorable Mutsipe, Honorable Malazi, in that order. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, greetings um, to, to everyone. And Chair, I think this presentation is very crucial uh, to the public service the medium um, term strategic, strategic frame, framework. We, I, 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 I think as government, we are in a position, government is in a position to see whether there is a tick in the box. Now, one would love to thank TPME
um, informative and trying to to tell us exactly as to what is that is their monitoring in this regard. Chair, I'm sorry. Um, Chair, I would love to, to ask you. Chair, I would love to ask some few questions though. One to say, how close um, does DPME monitor departmental APPs in this regard? Because for me, Chairperson, the performance and reports should be determined by the service delivery on the ground, whether provinces and local government are meeting their APPs and targets. So what tool does DPME use to scrutinize exactly if uh, they are walking the talk? Um, what is it that talks to MPEG and talks to SCOPA? Um, to say, by so doing, we are able to reduce departments being called by SCOPA or by uh, or local government impact and so on and so forth. Um, so for instance, uh, chair and the meeting, in terms of water supply by districts to local municipalities, this is still a, a one of the crises that our people still experience on the ground. So my, my question is sort of looking whether these uh, APPs and targets does meet the, 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 the needs of the people on the ground. Um, secondly, Chair, the, ho the present presidential hotline. That is very crucial because if you've been knocking in, 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 in many doors and not opening for you, this is the last result to, 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 to directly a call a through presidential hotline. Can they unpack the interventions done through this uh, presidential hotline, maybe one or two provinces, so that we, we do have a feel that this presidential hotline is not just a, a, a there. It's not just a, a, a sugar coating of some sort, but it's there to service a, a, the people of, of, of South Africa. And, and really uh, putting South Africa to what is supposed to be in terms of the capable state. Um, I remember at some stage um, between 2004 and 2009, um, one, one um, chief whip of the opposition brought in this, in the sitting, in the chamber, he brought a cake 
with one candle light to say, I've been trying to get hold of the uh, president. Now it's been a year. Here is the cake. It, it, it is the birthday of, 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 of my wanting to meet the president uh, in failure. Lastly, Chair, what are the measures put in place to deal with window dressing APPs and targets? Because uh, you'll find that each and every department will come up with glossy and rosy uh, documents to say what we are going to do, but failing to, to meet such targets. What are the measures that are put in place? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable Mkweba. Thank you very much, Chair, and uh, good morning uh, to the minister, the deputy ministers, and all honorable members in the department. Comrade, uh, uh, Chair, can I be allowed to close my video because of the network at the village? Okay, you, that is granted. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. And uh, let me welcome the detailed presentation by the, de de by the department and its work in progress. But however, Chair, I've got only three questions to the department. One I've picked up at the, in the presentation that uh, the department has highlighted that there is a challenge of alignment between the medium term and short term plan of the NDP with sector plans. Then my question, uh, honorable chair to the department is that, are there any mechanism put in place to assist the sector departments, including our municipalities to ensure all government plans are aligned with the NDP? And also the second question, Chair, I know there's a slide on monitoring implementation of the MTSF report. Then my question, Chair, to the department is that um, the, the service delivery challenges facing the state have highlighted the need for government to use reasonable methods to monitor and evaluate performance of public institutions against the implementation of the MTSF of the National Development Plan. Then my question, uh, Chair, now that there is an existence of the NTP, how has the department managed collating data and monitoring performance information of the National Development Plan? And also, how is the department managed to track to deliver the objectives of the vision 2030. And the last question, Chair, will be on the slide on the performance, mm -hmm. the ministerial performance agreements. Then my question, Chair, on that one is that uh, concerning the ministerial performance agreements against the implementation of the NTP, how aligned are the minister, ministerial performance agreements with the heads of departments with the implementation of the MTSF of the NDP? And then what is the integration between the integrated monitoring framework and the ministerial performance agreements in terms of performance indicators? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mutipe. Thank you very much, my Honorable Chairperson. Uh, I would like to welcome the report from the department. And then I've got a few questions that I would like the department. Is this integrated monitoring framework tool used to all uh, provinces? And then I would like to, to reiterate how often does this uh, website get updated? And how sure are the department that all rural areas do get used to it. And how far is the progress specifically in the rural areas? 
do they have all the facilities, the resources to can follow this tool? And because it is over nine years of the existence of the NDP, how were the department collecting data? What made the department to improve or change? Please be direct to the question. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Honorable Malati. Um, thanks, Chairperson. My, my question is related to um, what the department can do in its, you know, compilation of the um, of the review um, and and performance with regards to, you know, uh, the medium term strategic framework and also the NDP. So I just want to get this, given the fact that ministers are appointed um, at the pleasure of the president. What goes into the reporting, for instance, that goes towards the presence in the review of, you know, the targets set out in the performance agree uh, agreements and the performance of the ministers um, in their departments? What, what happens in scenarios wherein there is underperformance with regards to those targets? And what is what is what is the thought process with regards to the framing of such recommendation towards you know the the presidents with regard to areas of underperformance? What can be done to make sure that the performance is in line with the timeline for the MTSF and also the the execution of the NDP goals, so that you know these performance agreements don't also become a nice to have tick boxing. Uh, um, tick boxing exercise, but they can showcase to us because they are they, they, those agreements are public, but the review um, on them isn't yet. So what we need to get the sense is what what goes into informing the departments uh, through their monitoring of tracking under delivery where it exists and recommending how that under delivery then becomes on the right pace so that there is there there, there is um, achievement of those targets that has been set. And most importantly, what then happens when those targets aren't met for the period under review? Thanks, Chair. Honorable Komani. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, colleagues, uh, both deputy ministers. Let us also join the queue in acknowledging the the, the, the presentation. However, Chair, uh, I would want to first start by echoing the sentiments of the latter speaker. Because, Chair, uh, you know, the minister yes, correctly said they are, they are, they are appointed uh, uh, through the, ple uh, the pleasure of the president. But then uh, what, 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 what trust do we have in, in the in the in the monitoring uh, in monitoring performance of these ministers by the department because one would as well not be sure as to whether the recommendations would then uh, how do they measure the underperformance uh, or the non-performance of those ministers chair maybe if we can be taken uh, uh, up to speed in that and chair. Uh, Uh, in one slide, uh, the, the presentation said uh, they, 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 they track whether the plan is, tra is translated into service delivery programs, particularly in, 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 in the provinces and municipalities. And where we are seated, Chair, we know we've got a very serious problem of, 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 of service delivery. So my question would then be, how are they monitoring? Why are, are they are they also part of the planning? And the, and what 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 yardsticks do they use in terms of of, of monitoring? And what interventions are, 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 are brought into place in in terms of where we find challenges in in, in service deliveries? And chair again, one would as well ask as to how how do they uh, because the, the, one of their presentations says. They track the performance of the state-owned ent entities, and we, 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 where we are seated here, we know what is happening in those SOEs. 
So maybe if we can be taken into confidence as to how do the department track the performance of those uh, 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 SOEs in terms of assisting them, because we find some of them going into liquidation and so on and so on. So maybe if we can be taken into uh, confidence as to how they are assisted, assisted and how is that, uh, uh, how is that assistance? Assist, uh, 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 how are we keeping the, the, this SOEs from uh, underperforming and maybe going into the, the, the the, 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 the liquidation. And Chairperson, lastly, uh, how far is the mainstreaming and tracking implementation for women, people with disabilities and the youth development? Because this is a very serious uh, issue, particularly this was of women and people with disabilities. Thank you very much. Honorable Kondwe. Chairperson, um, let me start by appreciating the presentation from DPME and greeting everyone on the platform and welcoming the two new members to the committee. Um, Chairperson, I must say, uh, now I was expecting for today we would get a comprehensive and a, a holistic breakdown of how the individual government department at a national and a provincial level are faring in terms of the implementation of the MTSF. Um, because um, we are less than three years away from 2024 and we still don't have a, a picture of how individual uh, government departments are faring when it comes to the implementation of the MTSF, which um, of course we all know is informed by the NDP which um, you know is a blueprint for our development as a country, um, but I'm a bit concerned that um, you know that picture isn't coming across very clearly clearly um, in in today's uh, you know presentation because how do we then expect the presidents in the absence of such a picture you know that gives us an idea of how you know individual government departments are faring with respect to implementation of the MTSF to measure and assess the performance of, of, of you know, the various ministers. And, and how are we then going to hold these um, government departments accountable? Um, because um, it's, it's imperative that they, they try and ensure that whatever they're doing is not only aligned to the MTSF, but achieves you know, uh, the objectives of, of, of the MTSF uh, NDP. Um, I, I think that was just a general comment, um, and, and if I could just get a response to that. And I also wanted to find out how they're able to gauge the effectiveness of their various monitoring tools and systems. Um, you know, um, how sure are they that, you know, the systems and the tools that they're using are effective? I mean, I, I'm just trying to, 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 to get an idea of, of whether they're feeling the impact of, of, of these monitoring tools and, and, and assessment tools. Um, and then um, in, in, at the beginning of their presentation, um, they mentioned that um, there are two branches in the DPME that are charged with monitoring. And I just wanted them to be a bit specific about those branches and to get down into greater detail um, around the core responsibilities of, of those uh, branches uh, and also indicate how they ensure that there's synergy and coordination between these two branches within the DPME that are charged with monitoring. Can I invite now the department to, to respond to all the questions raised? Chair, Chairperson. Chairperson. I'm, I'm, you were I'm sorry, kicked sorry. out. You were kicked out. So I will I will give you the opportunity to to ask question, please. You were kicked out by the system. Take uh, the floor, Honorable Tarekou. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. Greetings to all members and uh, the members that have joined together with the, 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 the department. Uh, mine, Chairperson, is not just a question to, to say. But you know the concerns that I have, Chairperson. You know, we've been uh, 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 um, 
fed with information with 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 with, with the reports that uh, the department is monitoring the performance of, of the province provinces and, and, and local government, uh, but only to find that uh, still things are, are not going as expected. Uh, we should be by now be in a position to say such and su such, and such a, a, a department or, or municipality is failing to do one, two, three because of these following reasons, other than just saying there is a monitoring, monitoring and monitoring without a, 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 a getting any good re a, a rewards or results. You know, Chairperson, I've just been, for, for, quite, a, for quite a long time, I've, there's been a, a complaint about, about, about uh, the, the, the water services in, in, in our municipalities, more especially in, in, in rural areas where the reports have been coming out, more especially from the Department of Water and Sanitation uh, in, in, in the previous years, that uh, the local government was utilizing the, 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 the service of, of, of these water tankers to provide water in rural areas. But in the very same areas, there are, uh, uh, what are called, there are, there is an inf infrastructure in those areas, but they try by all means to make sure that uh, the use of the, the water tankers is, is still uh, uh, going on. You find that in some municipalities, there are water, uh, water uh, contracts on, of saying maybe providing six water tankers to provide uh, 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 water in the area, but only to find that uh, they're paying for more than that. Just a, an example, six has been contracted uh, uh, to work, but only to find that uh, 12 or, or 15 trucks are, are, are used, paying those uh, 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 contractors to, 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 to provide services. What is the department doing, having been aware that uh, there are those attempts, those practices by certain municipalities to squander the, 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 the the, 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 the funds to us to, to sort of uh, 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 enrich those that are, are, are close to them in order to get the kickbacks. Secondly, uh, Chairperson, uh, you know, there was a practice, um, I, 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 I understand it, it's still there, that you find uh, the provinces saying they are taking people, uh, they are taking a uh, parliament to, to the people. Hiring, uh, 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 what are call these catering companies, hiring the, these big tents, instead of those funds or those monies should be actually utilized for the proper service delivery, only to find that uh, the monies are channeled to em empower or enrich those uh, uh, connected, uh, uh, pe people to, to, to those in, in, in power. You know, Chairperson, it's very worrying. Not long ago, last month, we have been having a problem of, of, of uh, the, 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 what do you call it? The, the security in our country. Could we then say, as the department is just presenting, that uh, the the role that, that are playing in, in, in building safer uh, communities and, and, and fight corruption in, in the country, where, whereas corruption is ripe in our country. Can we uh, say then the department is, is doing a, a, a proper job to, to, to say they monitor and report to the uh, presidency and steps are taken to, 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 to quell those uh, unnecessary uh, 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 wasteful expenditures? I, I, I thank you, Chair. Please bear with me, I have a problem with being uh, 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 chairperson crippled by the network uh, uh, as well as uh, 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 the, 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 the technology because now I'm now using the, the, the cell phone instead of, of, of the, the, the tablet. The challenge is always there for uh, 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 me in, in, in the rural area where I reside, chairperson. Thank you, but for, for the minute you gave me. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Kulo. I see Honorable Malati want to second back. My apologies, Chair. I should have taken my hand down after speaking, so I'll do so now. Okay. Can, can, can the department respond to questions raised by Honorable Members? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm going to touch on a few. 
and then I'm going to allow colleagues to, to touch on others. We want to appreciate the, the interaction that you have had with us. Um, there is a question, so I'm going to go one by one from the order that was you were asking on. There's a question from Honorable Julie in relation to how close are we to monitoring departmental APPs, uh, the monitoring tool interventions done through presidential hotline and measures done to stop window dressing APPs and meetings and meeting of our targets. For example, in relation to the presidential hotline, in most cases, when we conduct frontline monitoring, whether it, it is a surprise frontline monitoring or it is a planned front, frontline monitoring, we take the concerns from the presidential hotline. We also take a report. You might find that the department, we went maybe in 2019 to go and intervene that there is no water in a particular community. We then at a particular time go back to recheck so that we can be able to alert the relevant department to follow up. For example, two weeks back, we went to the magistrate, the Renberg Magistrate Court, where we got a complaint from the presidential hotline that uh, victims of gender-based violence stand on a line for a long time and that they are not given attention, but if you go in you're a celebrity, you skip the line. Then what we do is that we go, and actually there we did a, a, a surprise monitoring visit. That also addresses the question of, of corruption in departments and counselors. We have been able to intervene, and this this some of the good stories that we have done, where we got a president a, a complaint from the hotline that a councillor was given a RDP house. He took that house, he demolished it, and then he built a double store and so on. And we were able to one go and verify that is true. Two, then we are able to tell the relevant department, in this case, it's the police, that they can be able to to then take it further and 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 and, 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 and let the law. Uh, take its course. Now, what we need to explain is that in this sixth administration, we have got seven priorities. Those seven priorities come from the National Development Plan. Now, what we have been able to do is that we had to sit down and look at what the fifth administration was doing and to review where are the shortfalls. And that informed the, the seven priorities. Those seven priorities find expression in the MTSF. Now, the, the medium-term strategic framework in this regard, unfortunately, we had to review it because of unseen circumstances. If you had listened to my colleague when he was presenting, he mentioned two major reasons which informed us to review the MTSF, which was the July 2021 riots, and, and, and the biggest one was, was the, the, the COVID-19, which we did not foresee, and therefore we had to review. And that process has been underway so that we can be able to respond to the current challenges. Uh, from, from the MTSF, we're then able to guide departments so that when they do their own planning, so from the seven priorities, then you outstretch them in the MTSF, you give them to departments. Departments were able to guide them as the DPME to say, in, if you're the Department of Health, you're the Department of Water and Sanitation, the seven priorities in your relation, they speak to this. And they're then able to to produce those APPs. That is why in the presentation, I'm going to call, request my colleagues that maybe you speak in a, in a lighter language so that our colleagues can be able to understand that from those reporting, the frameworks that we have are then able through a, an internal channel that we have to guide us to be able to say, are they in line? Are your APPs in line? Are you able to follow them up? Now, what it also means is that even the performance of, of DGs are, are, are in line with what their APPs would have said, but also most importantly in relation to the MTSF and then directly to go into responding to the targets and, and, and the NDP. On our Gwemba, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, asked about MTSF and the NDP challenges of alignment. There is not necessarily a, a challenge of alignment. What is happening, like we've indicated, is that there is just the question that we had to review the MTSF because of the pandemic. And if you remember last year, even the, there is a review of, of which was, I'm not sure if that's the correct word, tabling, if it's called tabling, of, 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 of the NDP to check that halfway, where the NDP, if I'm correct, we're left with nine years or so, halfway, where are we? Now that alignment continues to happen. And that is why it was able to assist 
this sixth administration that you need seven priorities and 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 also importantly is that you must remember that when the NDP was 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 founded it had a lot of targets and over time we have been able to reduce them so that we can because we continue to to mirror ourselves to check whether we are on track in 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 reaching the targets where do we think we need to to enhance more and and, and improve and therefore, departmental programs are aligned to the NDP in that context. Honorable Mutsepe, uh, the integrated monitoring tool is that remember government has got three spheres. Now, the, the very same process that I've spoken about. Now departments, when they, they understand the MTSF and they understand how their AP should be, they are able then to cascade it to the local sphere. So if it's the Department of Coxta, for example, it will be able to then go to our local municipality, local government to ensure that we're then aligned. And in each and every department, there's that reporting model and system, which then goes back to a national department. And, and, and in that way, they are aligned. How often do we update the website? We update it on a daily basis. Um, I think yesterday we released a statement in relation to, I can't, I can't remember, or we release it today in the morning. If you go to the website, it's updated. And even if you go to the website, you're going to find that the performance of ministers, which they've done, and deputy ministers with the president, they're there online. And we have decided to put them out there so that, that you can be able to, to hold our people accountable. We update it on a, on a, on a daily basis. Now, uh, the one that I did not understand, I'm hoping my colleagues will answer it, is that you were talking about rural areas, follow, follow the tool and, and, and so on. How do we collect data? Now, we've got different institutions that are able to collect data, but we are also collecting data on ourselves. For example, Status is able to provide us with data. We're able to CSIR to also look into their data. But most importantly, what we have decided to do, we have, we have um, digitalized the presidential hotline. So when the presidential hotline, for example, was founded, you, you could only send an email and you could call. And what we have done is that now we've given our people a US, USSD number. So even if you're in a rural area and you don't have a smartphone, you can just star what what and then hash and then you are able to lodge your complaint. And that is also a process of ensuring that we interact with our people who might not be able to, to bring data to us through, if you call it technology or the use of, of, of ICT. And in that digitalization, we have also ensured that because our people are always on the phone, and especially young people, you, you can, you've got a Kaulesa app that you can, you can download. After downloading it, you can even take a picture. For example, with the, with the, the Renbeck Magistrate Court, in, on, the law, on the complaint, a person took a picture of the queue and said, this is the time when I'm here. I'm coming for the third day. And they kept on showing us. So we had that, that form of, of evidence. And that has necessarily assisted us. And we continue to receive compliments and, and, and complaints through the whole process. And, and, and But most importantly, even in the department, I'm going to, to request that the department, when you respond, let's make the language lighter so that they can understand that we also have got our own internal capacity of, of, of we also have got what you call outcome facilitators on different sectors, health and so on. They are also able to provide the necessary information and data. Now, let me just clarify it, colleagues, before I leave the question of Honorable Mutsepe, that in all of this, we need to understand that DPME, we assist departments, we collect reports, we go back to them to show them that this is where you need to correct. It is the responsibility of departments and the political principles to ensure that the reports that we give them, they implement. We can only write and tell them, we can only assist them in, in, through our monitoring framework to ensure that this is where you are, this is where you need to correct. And then we, we remind the political principal and the political principal remember in their own agreement, they've got a commitment that they need to ensure that those things that we have identified with them, they implement them. Otherwise they will have to go in and account to their employer. And in this case, the employer is the president. Honorable Malati, what goes into reporting in ministers? is what I've indicated that part of the agreement, for example, I'll speak about mine, that for example, in DPME, I've been given a responsibility of frontline monitoring, brand essay, state essay, I just forgot the other one. Now, 
that is what now the MTSF will say under MDDA, for example, which we find community radio stations. I'm just giving an example. This is what we want to do. We want to redress the past. We want to fund those who have not funded. We want blah, 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 blah. Now, that is my performance, which then when the department is going to be assessing, I'm going to be assessed on that. And that I can honestly tell you that it is credible because DPM is independent from whether I'm able to do my work or not. It, depend, it depends on me as a, as, a, as a deputy minister, that with the institution, through the correct laws, we are able to, to do the correct things. That is why it's important that, for example, from time to time, you, you need to have your annual performance plan, you need to have your, your, your reports, quarterly reports, financial reports, to, to mirror myself, that is the team that I'm leading able to live up to the expectation. Uh, the, the, the underperformance of ministers, for example, if if I'm I'm underperforming, the 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 employer, in this case the president, the decision lies with him. I can safely tell you that DPME continues to write honest reporting and be able to submit them where they are supposed to go. The NDP goals, the seven priorities of this seven of this sixth administration, those goals with the, the seven priorities are an expression which is found in the NDP. I will repeat, when the NDP was founded, it had a lot of targets. Over time, we have had to reduce them because we continue to review ourselves as government. And then there is a, a consciousness that we're coming to an end of the NDP. Where do we think we need to, to strengthen? Where do we need to think we need to tighten? And therefore, that informs the seven priorities, which you, found in, you find in, in our agreement in, 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 in the MTSF. And gladly, even with the review of the MTSF, those uh, seven priorities, as much as COVID has affected us, we, we are able to assist departments to say, here, because of, 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 the, of the pandemic, this is where we think you can be able to do. I'll give you an example. There's an economic recovery plan. Now, that plan is a product of saying, as much as you are reviewing the MTSF because of, of COVID departments, this is what, where you need to to focus on and do so that at the end still we are able to reach the targets, the seven of the of the of the, of the targets of the of the NDP. Honorable Komani, we have got trust. So the question is, what trust do we have in performing? We have got trust that DPM is able to write the reports, take them necessarily where they are supposed to go. We have got trust that complaints of the presidential hotline. If we find that they are saying to us, there is a teacher who's stealing food parcels, for example, we have got the trust that that pro problem is taken to the re relevant department so that they can be able to deal with it. We've got that trust. That, that part as DPME we are able to do. Now the yardstick, I'm going to request, I think on the slide is slide, is it slide 15? the intervention monitoring support. If you can just go back to that slide and then simply unpack it for, for our colleagues. I'm going also to request, now it will speak more because slide 15, if I'm correct, it speaks about intervention support. Now, that if, if, if we speak to that, you are going to understand that it, it is a second slide which has got all the, the measures that we do. It will tell you that we are able to if there's an act, a child protection act, for example, which, which is tabled, we are able to go after some time to go and say, is this act actually speaking to what we wanted to address? And as DPME, we're able to review it. And then after that, speak to the department that maybe here we need to improve. And so actually departments are able to come to us and say to us, we're requesting that you come in and review our implementation of a particular act and where are the shortfalls, and then we're able to do that and tell them. Now, the question remains with the particular department that they need then if they, the legislation needs to be tightened and so on, it remains with them to be able to do that. But we shall have told them. I'm going to request and my colleagues, uh, please let's note it. Let's take it to the Department of Women and People with Disabilities. If I, if I had correctly, that it was cutting. It, it wanted some particular numbers and some programs that they are doing. If we can go back to them and request that they give us that information, and then we ask the committee that we will come back with the correct responsibility. That ministry is with Minister Kwanamashavan. Honorable 
Gondwe. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. But with the implementation of the MTS agreement. Correct, right, ma'am. It's fine, thank you. And how does president do? Now, maybe you know, colleagues, DG, we must ask for one day uh, through you, Chair uh, Dr. James, that maybe one day we just need to come to the committee uh, to come and just tell you our successes. Could we just spend two hours? We tell you from those that that page fifteen, the monitoring, uh, what you call it, the inter the intervention support. We come there. We say on this intervention, and we tell you about from twenty. 2019 July, did we start in July? From there until today, we say to you on this one, this is the success. This is this, this is this and that. Because I think the frustration that you are having that every day we come here, we're saying monitoring framework, implementation tool, that and that. And 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 and, and, and we keep coming to answer the same questions because you're asking us the same question. And I think it's a frustration of maybe how we want to acknowledge that we come and then we speak at a high level. Maybe if we can make a day we request, we just come and we say our intervention support, here are the successes. We come and we speak about the successes. And then we come and also tell you, this, this is a, just a maybe 10 slide to say on this one, one, two, three, one, two, three, so that you can, you can really appreciate the work that the, the department is doing. Because honestly, the department is, is doing a lot. The system is fair, I think I've answered it. Uh, you spoke about branches. So you've got what you call a FSTM, that is Frontline Service Delivery Monitoring. For example, under that one, you will find that there's the presidential hotline. There's also the one that I was talking about of, he'll talk, to, he'll talk more about it. Uh, and it's effective, and, and 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 maybe if you can expand on the on the two branches that we're talking about, one of them is the FSDM. So this is in relation to the structure of, of the organogram of the institution. If you can speak to that, Honorable Ebekulu, I hope he's back because he was talking about network. Um, we have noted your concerns which you have raised. Um, now in 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 provinces in the office of the premier. We have got, should I call them branches? DG will assist me with the correct word. We have got what you call branches. In each and every office of the office of the premier, we've got a, a DPME unit or a component. They might, in other institutions, they don't call it DPME, they call it something else. And those ones, they are directly linked and they report to outcome facilitators who are based in the head office, in this case, in the presidency in the Department of Planning, Monitoring, and Evaluation. They also conduct the very same service of complaints and so on. I will give you an example. In Limpopo and also the Premier, the province has got a hotline. Now, and then they've got a unit of, of, of DPME. They also do frontline monitoring. They collect complaints from the public, for example. They also assist their provincial departments with planning and producing documents, with producing their own APPs, in, in assisting them to align their targets to the targets of the MTSF, which, are inform, which then inform the seven priorities, which then inform the, the, the planning of, of departments. So is, there is that, that coordination and they are able to bring them back to us so that we can be able to, to assist. In, in other instances, it's, it's policy intervention. We also assist in that. Other inter, in instances, uh, it's, it's section 100, for example, in Northwest, uh, it came through a channel of, of, of a concern, which then reached the national department and which then assisted the national department to be able to say, let's put the department under, under section 100. Uh, if Kekana wants to speak, she can then speak. And then after that, colleagues, please go into detail. And I'm, I'm requesting humbly, let's speak, let's tone on, yeah, I know sometimes even myself when I when I'm speaking on media, I just say monitoring from like MTSF, what, 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 what? It becomes a little bit unfair. And we apologize for that. I know they are going to make it simpler for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, DM. Thank you, Chair. Um members of the portfolio committee. I think I'm 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 going to 
give the the reforms that the minister wants us to look at noting the concerns that members have raised i think as we speak now members are aware that we are almost in the middle of our mtsf implementation and while we know that cabinet has adopted the district development model as a model that will assist the three spheres of government to integrated service delivery program. Now, so our integrated MTSF monitoring and reporting should also institutionalize the district development model. Now, our minister, Minister Gungubele, is embarking on reforms in the whole value chain of planning, monitoring and evaluation. So one of the immediate things that the minister was to, wants to embark on is to have a slot in the Forum of South African Directors General so that he can share the approach with the DGs on how we should integrate the district development model as part of our monitoring and evaluation program. Now, in his words, Minister Gungubele was saying, we need to have a national perspective on things that needs to be done. We know the seven priorities that we have, and in those seven priorities, all of them should address the issues, for example, of poverty, inequality, and unemployment. Now, that also speaks to what the NDP is speaking to. And the fortunate part is that even the SDGs and the Agenda 2063 issues find expression in our NDP. So Minister now says in this regard, using, for an example, unemployment, inequality and poverty, as part of what the seven priorities should respond to. We know that we'll also speak to what uh, honorable members were talking to, how women's challenges will be addressed, the unemployment of young people and people with disabilities. So that call then says, all departments plans must respond to the call. And now, the minister's directive was to say, DPME, you have to now reposition yourself. You should become an authentication station. Everything that the president says, the pronouncements that he does in SONA, they must always find expression in the APPs of departments, in their plans, so that even when we monitor and evaluate, we know that all these things speaks to the seven priorities, speaks to the pronouncement by the president, and we're able to hold everybody accountable. So the approach by Minister Gungubele in the past few weeks was to say, DPME, interrogate the plans of the department. Let's ensure that the implementation also we're able to interrogate so that we're able to see and feel the impact at the end. So the reporting, the biannual reporting by DPME should also be able to tell us whether we're making impact or not, even before Stats SA or any other institution can be able to tell us internally as we do and interrogate the plans of department and the implementation thereof, we should be able to pick up this thing. So we want to reposition DPME to lead better in as far as planning is concerned, in as far as monitoring and evaluation is concerned. And we believe that the reforms that the minister is talking to will prepare this department for the next APP so that by the time we come to the end of the MTSF, 
we are better positioned, we know the impact, and as we continue to implement the NDP, we know that we are responding to those key issues that all South Africans participated in when this blueprint came into being. And Chair, on that note, I will want to ask the, the DG to respond on issues that were specific that members um, were asking. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, DMs. Uh, Chair, I think most of the issues have been covered by the two uh, principals. I just want to check something before I ask my colleagues perhaps to emphasize on one or two issues about time. I remember at the start of the meeting, we're talking about time so that I can also assist yourselves to catch the bus. Now, the question is how much time do we have uh, to complete one or two issues that may need to be emphasized? We don't have much time because the bus will be here at half past 11. Okay, that is fine, Chair. So we'll attempt to take no more than 15 minutes to deal with uh, some of the issues, uh, specific issues. Let me run uh, through uh, some of the issues and I'll ask Dr. Bihari to speak more on the presentation hotline once again, in addition to what has already been said. Chair, on the anti-corruption effort, I'll start with a honorable Bekulu. A lot of work has been done. We have adopted the national anti-corruption strategy, which has gone through cabinet, NETLEC, and other uh, forums of partners. So there is that uh, strategy and it's currently being uh, implemented. And one of the interventions that we are introducing is the establishment of the anti-corruption advisory council as announced by the president in the SONA. So that work is uh, ongoing. The approach that we're taking obviously is that of a countrywide approach. So that is not just a government effort, but it's also, it also involves other stakeholders in society. The other issue related to corruption is the work that we're doing on the vaccine rollout. A lot of work being done to mitigate the challenges that we may face. Learning from the earlier experience in the procurement of, of PPEs, so we have a mechanism that we have institutionalized, working with a whole lot of organizations internally within government and also outside of government, including uh, Corruption Watch. And on a regular basis, we report to the interministerial committee that is chaired by the DP of the country. And the SIU is obviously at at work and a lot of communications goes out to indicate pro progress that the SIU is making in dealing with some of the cases that have been identified. Treasury also on its own is doing a, quite a lot of work to mitigate challenges. Now, so on the whole chair, we have a foolproof mechanism to mitigate the corruption in the rollout of uh, the vaccine. It could be that there are uh, challenges in here and there, but on the whole, we believe that we have what, what it takes. Quickly on what the Honorable Gondre was talking about, we can bring the quarter one report that he indicate where we are in terms of the performance of individual government departments. The last report we presented to cabinet was in June, which focused on the last financial year. But if there is a requirement for us to come and be specific, we can do that. As DMK has indicated, we assess our tools and hence we are talking about reforming the system so that it can work optimally. And the next time we come, we can also indicate what it is that we, we, we have done given a time. On the SOC's uh, Honorable uh, Command, what we do in the main SDPME is to monitor the work of those who are charged with making sure that SOCs work better. So there are government departments that are responsible for SOC oversight. We don't want to duplicate the work of those government departments, but what we do, we exercise oversight on the departments themselves. So the departments 
look at the entities and we look at the work that the departments are, are doing and we can share more details on what we see. But if, fair enough, it's correct to say that many of our agencies are facing challenges and we need to move with the necessary speed to repurpose most of them. And the president has led by example in the way the Transnet Post Authority is being reformed so that we can enhance efficiencies in that space. So learning from the experience of what the president has done with the TNPA, the Transnet National Post Authority, we believe that we can also have similar things happening in other areas because indeed most of our SOCs are facing uh, challenges. Honorable Ntuli, very quickly, we do work in the provinces. We have been meeting with all the provinces as DPMA to deal with the alignment issues. We check the APPs of the provinces to ensure that there is alignment with what we, we are doing at the national level and indeed throughout the value chain. Now that is work is very that work is very important also for the DDM, the district development model, because I must say that the district development model is not about local government but it's about all spheres working together. So DPME is intervening decisively to make sure that the three spheres are aligned in terms of their plans. And one of the things that we have done now was to develop what we call georeferencing guidelines so that all projects that are being implemented by the different spheres of government are referenced, are adequately referenced. And we can share that information in terms of the projects that have been referenced we are aware that some of the departments have not completed the georeferencing of projects so that we can always have a line of sight in terms of what is happening in the different area. I'll ask Dr. Bihari, as I conclude, Chair, to speak on the, on the presidential outline. But just one thing, Honorable Mguero, on the issue of the ministerial performance. One of the requirements for ministers is to ensure that departments perform. So what it means is that if departments do not perform, then that becomes part of the scorecard of a particular minister. I need to indicate that this is the first time that we've done this. So currently DPME is working on the first report that will be going to the president in the next few weeks, accounting for the performance of departments, but also indicating pointers of the extent to which that performance aligns with the commitments that were made in the MTSF. And we take it that after the conclusion of the entire process, the president will, will, will then give an indication to the, to the Republic on what has happened and the state of performance of the executive. Then on citizens monitoring, I'll ask Mr. Heck to quickly speak to, to that. And on that note, let me ask the two colleagues to respond. So Mr. And Sir Pontin is going to speak on citizens monitoring in line with the question raised by Honorable Mutsepe. We have dealt with the question by Honorable Malazi on the issue of the performance of the ministers. And Dr. Bihari will speak on the presidential hotline and that will conclude our responses in Chairperson. So Hank first, followed on, by Dr. Bihari. Okay, on the, on the presidential hotline, I think uh, Deputy Minister's work has, has, has made an indication to us that uh, we can invite her back to the committee so that she take us through complaints reported in that hotline and the action the department has taken on those, uh, those com uh, complaints. Therefore, he must not deal with that matter now. We will invite you back to deal specifically with all the, the complaints in the presidential hotline and the responses and the action that the, the department has taken on those, on those complaints. We, we are rushing for time. We are rushing for time because we must walk from our houses to, to the bus stop. Okay, Chair, then that concludes it, but let me just dispose of the question on, the, on, on, on citizens monitoring. Now, with our limited resources, what we are trying to do is also to go out there 
and get the voices of citizens with respect to the different areas of performance of, of government. And again, we can share some of the insights that are coming from that. That will conclude our response, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Honorable Chair. Thank Honorable you. Thank you. Honorable Chairperson. Honorable. Honorable. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, can I come in? Honorable Chair, can I come in? You, know? you, you, will be, you will be unfair to the department because it has provided all the responses. If yes, I... Anything you want. I think what you should do, Honorable Mr. You can you can meet your question in writing, and the department will respond to. You. It's not a question. Honorable it's Peter. a remark. It is not a question, honorable chairperson. It is a remark that I would like to do. Please, my chairperson. It's not long. Can I? I'm, I'm always flexible. Let me hear what you want to say. Okay. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, as honorable members, we do pose questions and then those questions must be answered by the department. But when we ask question and then we hear that the answer on those answers, the response is saying that uh, we must not ask same questions every time. So I want to say that you are going to ask one question every time as we do not get the correct answers, the proper one that we want. So the department must know that if the correct answers is not provided, we will keep on asking one question every time until we get the proper one that is relevant. Thank you so much, Honorable Thank you, Honorable Mutsi. No, Honorable Mutsi, you are within your right as a member of the committee. If you are not satisfied with the answer, you will keep on uh, raising those questions. And the department must not be annoyed with that because that is the oversight that the committee must play over the departments. So you, you, are, you are right and protected. With that, uh, honorable members, for participating in this portfolio committee meeting today, the, the, the challenge given to us by uh, Honorable has invite her back that we're raising the presidential host, uh, hotline and what action the department has taken on those, uh, on those comments. That we are going to do, uh, Honorable Pierre. Uh, I will ask the secretary to do that specifically for the portfolio committee. Thank you, everybody. Thank you once again. Thank you, all the DMs. Thank you, all the honorable members. Now, the meeting has come to an end. Thank you so much, honorable chairperson. Meeting stands adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, chairperson. Hey, but chairperson, is it your anniversary today? You look very smart, eh? Hey, and it's nice to be led by people who are like you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I agree. I agree. I agree. It's my wedding lunch. <laughs> Honorable. Uh, Take up for lunch, Chair. My, my yeah, wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I am so smart. <laughs> 35 years. 
<laughs> oh, well done, well done, Jay. Amanda, 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 Jay.
honorable members, now the meeting has come to an end. Amanda, Amanda, Jeff.